boom look at that crisp crisp painting okay you sure want to be able to draw like this don't you oh no it's gone but it's okay because we're going to be doing a play-by-play in-depth review analysis of the speed paint so that you can learn exactly what i did to draw this painting right here now this is going to be a little bit more freestyling a little bit more scuffed so be prepared for some tomfoolery now the first stage in any digital art painting process is obviously the sketch and do you think i just pulled something right out of my butt cheeks no i definitely did not i have gathered a reference from pinterest the most goaded of goaded reference places and if you like what you see, yes, my Pinterest profile is public, so you can go see all my boards. I'll put a link in the description so all you lazy gits can get some juicy references for free. Now go forth. Actually, no, don't. Watch, watch this video, and then you can go forth. As you can see, my sketches stay pretty loose, but for this piece, I'm really trying to capture that love, that eye contact that they got going on. Something that, sadly, I cannot possess with another human being because I am maidenless. But... That is why drawing exists, so you can turn your crippling loneliness into a masterpiece. You'll never guess what happens next. I remove all the trees that you see in the foreground of the piece, and then just boom, at a big ass house. Well, not really, it's still in the reference, but I just bring it to the forefront to add some interest. Anyways, there's a sketch. I mean, there's not really a lot of things I could say other than just <laughs> get good, I guess. But no, seriously, work on your basic shapes. And soon enough, if you keep practicing sketching through reference, you'll be able to just get that hand-eye coordination. So where that you can draw with relative ease and draw what you want to without having to draw boxes and circles and all those guidelines every time. Know what I'm saying? On to the color blocking stage. Now, there's some conflicting reports of how detailed you want to make your color blocking stage or just getting your first initial colors down. But I personally think that it is one of the most important things to get your colors right as soon as possible. Because if you don't, you'll be just scrambling throughout the painting and you won't be able to fix it. Sometimes, especially when I was younger in my earlier art stages, I'd be like, yo, I could fix this. I'm the G, but not really. I'm trash, cuh. And so I'd just be fiddling around sticks for like three hours before I even get something good going. So in this stage, I really want to hone in and get the colors right as soon as possible. And since this is a background, like since there's a large background in this piece, I also want to start getting the background done first. I learned this from Ate Gaihan, I think that's how you pronounce his name. OG, but basically he said if your piece is background focus, you want to start with your background. If your piece is portrait focus, you should probably start with your portrait. Now, to be extra clear and no room for confufflery, you can have a focus on colors, but not have to detail every single leaf. Like right now, I have a very complex background with a ton of leaf foliage. You know, that is absolute fish sticks. I mean, we've all been there. Drawing foliage is an artist's absolute worst nightmare. So, to emphasize the point even farther, I know that this background is going to get blurred in some fashion, so I'm not detailing it too hard, I'm just making sure that the colors are right, and you can see that I'm not detailing it too hard because I'm just taking a basic round brush and taking a bunch of dots and dotting where the leaves should be. Now I think a common rookie mistake here is that people forget to actually add in the darks at this stage, they go way too light and you gotta just, you gotta take the hit bro, you gotta just punch in your darks and make sure that they are somewhat where they need to be and look at that the painting looks almost done <laughs> i mean not really but basically the background all the base colors are there and basically for the entire rest of the painting i'm not going to vary too much from this color palette that i set and it's going to make my life way easier trust me okay now that i got the background in a comfortable place now i'm just basically setting in the colors for the lovebirds same thing that I was talking about with the background still applies for the people. You know, obviously I'm just trying to get the colors really honed in so that I'm not stressed out later on down in the process. However, since this is people, I could go a little bit more detailed and start putting in the wrinkles of the dress or not dress, the school shirt and, you know, start getting those types of details in. And if you didn't catch what happened with the layers, slow poke. Basically what happened is I first had the base, the base gray that you saw, and then I layered out the skin on layer, the dress, why do I keep calling a dress? The shirt on a layer and the hair on another separate layer. Once I get those stuff to like a good color range, then I merge all those layers down and then also merge the sketch down uh, as well. I used to have commitment issues where I couldn't merge my sketch layer down. I was too petrified that I need to change something later down the road. But you know, I'm just, bro, trust me, it's so much easier to work with the sketch inside your painting, or at least that's how I like to do it. Okay, now that we're in a good place with the people, now it's time to swerve back to the background and finish up that final 30% and get it rocking and rolling. 
And so you can see my brush strokes have become a lot smaller and I'm actually individually pinning these leaves highlights in. Whereas before in the background, they were literally just, I wasn't even thinking about an individual leaf. I was just, yeah, bro, there's some green, there's some dark green, make some leaves, boom. And obviously the house needs some major renovation works. I mean, right now it's, it's basically just a green flat wall. So I fill in the roof with a darker shadow tiling sort of vibe, and then also just get some white rims and you know, you know, the details. From the beginning, since time, I knew that this front little panel balcony thing that you see, it was gonna be glass, okay? You might not have known it, but I did. And so what I do is I basically take the leaf layer, the front leaf layer that you see, and I copy and paste it and clip it onto that balcony glass. And so what that does is now I could just blur the leaf on top of the glass and it gives this really nice reflective effect. Okay, the painting is looking good, looking good. Now, this is the grind part, okay? I'm very, very satisfied with myself, and so now I'm just getting that final percent done. And I know I say final, but brother, this will be a long time, okay? Getting those final details is where you probably spend most of your time. In my earlier videos, I did a study of Sam Dazar's, and basically a thing that I said there was that he, he basically gets like 70% of his painting done in the first like one third, one fourth, of the actual painting and the rest of that three fourths is gone to detailing and all the extra small bits okay capiche capiche so far everything has been smooth sailing i haven't had too much difficulty but if you had a keen eye not gonna lie at the beginning i had a problem that i ignored the girl's face was a little jank and now i'm <laughs> i'm gonna reap the consequences of my own actions basically so after a ton of struggling that you don't get to see because it's all sped up, I basically just, I said, bun it, I'm going to redo the face and just cover it over and start anew. Luckily, however, this actually did wonders for me and I was able to get a good sketch in relatively easily. I mean, after I sold my soul trying to fix the previous sketch, I guess, I guess the universe decided to give me a bone and let me get a good decent sketch on the first try. There's this cool effect that I like to highlight here is just you, the use of the add layer, okay? The add color mode layer. When I'm doing this, like you see the really bright shiny bits on the hair, basically what I'm doing is I have an add layer and I take a really like somewhat saturated color and I just go over it. Then I go back to my base layer and then do the same thing underneath that stroke I just made. And then I go back onto the add layer and then just use the smudge tool to smudge a little to get that little bloomish or blur effect to get that nice nice realistic glow and lastly you know basically the entire painting is done i'm just adding in the final like color dodge layer effects and basically final effects to you know give that wrap it in a nice little bow and give it as a christmas gift on a cold december 25th toronto night i also start tweaking at the stage because i'm basically just showing and hiding and showing and hiding layers over and over again because i'm like yo does this really look good or is this trash did i just you know basically i'm indecisive and i spent way too long just hiding and unhiding uh color adjustment layers and one color adjustment that i always do is just bump up the saturation just a smidge okay it really does help in the long run and i just think it looks better in my opinion like I said in my previous previous videos my style is oversaturate the crap out of your paintings I mean, just look at this though. Final color adjustments, no final color adjustments. Final color adjustments, so much better. So just please put in that extra effort to color adjust, add some color effects, and so your piece will just look so much, so much better. Alrighty, there is the final piece for the second time. Thank you for going through nine minutes of this just to see it again. <laughs> No, but I mean, I don't know how you'll react to this. The commentary was absolutely scuffed, but hopefully you did catch some of my little tidbits of tips and tricks, like a trick shot montage. I don't know what that means, but hopefully the video helped. That's basically what I'm saying. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And you might even want to hit that red subscribe button. Much appreciated. Already, good boy. Oh, and for the couple of people who keep asking for the forehead kiss back, this one's for you guys.